Well, my name's Hayden Groves, and um, I'm here at West London College to deliver a masterclass to the students this afternoon. So seafood for Gola. Um, could use any seafood, but we're using some uh, small brown shrimps, some squid, and uh, we're finishing off with some scallops on top. Uh, Fregola, beautiful kind of pasta from Sardinia, and we're cooking that almost like a passata style, tomato, chicken stock, um, with shallots, lots of aromatics in there, finishing it off with the uh, shellfish. Fregola is um, a very small, almost like um, petit pois size pasta. So it's very small balls of pasta and it's a very traditional dish from Sardinia. So you might have seen it as a salad, but we're, we're showcasing it and it's probably what I would say is best form. So we dice a shallot and some garlic and just sweat that briefly in some olive oil. Then we add our squid, uh, finely diced squid. You could use a baby squid. We're just using the, the squid tubes, um, frozen, fantastic frozen squid. And if you're using fresh, then I'd recommend putting it in the freezer anyway. It's a great way to tenderize your squid. Dice your squid up small, saute those off briefly in the olive oil that's got the garlic and the shallot in it. Then we add some white wine, some tomato puree, and we just cook that down just for a few minutes and that will be our sort of squid tomato base. Then in a separate pan, then we cook again some garlic and some shallot in some olive oil. Then we add our fregola and coat that in the oil as if you were making a kind of risotto, shall we say. Then we add our passata squid mix into that, make sure it's well stirred, some chicken stock, and then we let that simmer. And then that's the that's sort of stage two. It's all about just the preparation of, of, of squid. It is it's quite a simple preparation when you know. It's so removing the skin. You've got a quill in there, and just being quite careful how you remove the head, making sure that there's you know you're not bursting any of that ink sac because it can get a messy job, and just a. Essentially, I'd always keep a, a, a clean tea towel or, or, or a J cloth there just to help remove the skin and pat dry and clean as you go. And then you're just left with a tube and it's very easy for the preparation. Yes, I think with squid you have to cook it very quick or long and slow. We're going over to the, the slower version, almost like braising it. I, I feel it's the application of the heat, obviously baby squid, is, is a very quick, almost like a calamari style, very quick cook, and it's going to be tender. A larger squid would uh, certainly benefit from a stuffing and a slow braise or finely dicing, and then uh, uh, cooking slower, as, as in this dish. It, it's, it's a classic marriage, and then we're adding the seafood towards the end. The shrimps get added, and just essentially being warmed through because they're cooked. The scallops are being cooked um, in a pan, finished, and then we add any of the juices and the cooking liquor from the, any, the residual liquor that's come out of the scallops. That gets added and folded through as well. And then it's just a, a beautiful plate of uh, a food that served uh, family service. This was eaten in Agrigento, which was, um, and uh, obviously was writing a book just got a few copies left, unashamed plug, but um, we're riding the Giro d'Italia as our first grand tour for Cue Leukemia, a charity that I'm a patron of. So we're gonna ride the whole Giro d'Italia. And although we'd ridden the Tour de France two years previous, the Giro was a completely different sort of a look and feel about it. It was a very exciting tour. This was before stage one, so we needed some carbs, but also I wanted something authentic because I was writing a book and, you know, and it screamed out, this dish is a little bit different. Sardinia is famous for Sardinian lemons and, and I envisaged the flavors and um, I just replicated them in, in, in the home kitchen. I, I think Italian cuisine is completely different from French. It's, it's you know, famously regionalized.
Yeah, so the chicken stock gets added once the frigola's had a nice coating in all of those oily juices, then like you would be making a risotto. So it's almost just a 30 second to make sure all of that's combined. Then you would add your, your chicken stock. You could add fish stock, um, but I, I feel that the, with chicken, it's just a little bit more rounded flavor. Uh, the scallops I felt were a quick cook for the home cook um, and then they add that sort of jeweled element within what is essentially almost like a peasant style dish. You've got um, squid and starch and I just wanted to elevate it slightly with just some, some jewel like scallops just on top. When we look at a vegetable for example then we say al dente which is to the bite so they're the vegetable still has some form of structure. It's not a crudite, it's not raw, it's not crunchy, it just has that element of bite, it's slightly toothsome. And that's what you're looking for when you have the frigola. So it still has, an, it's not soft and mushy, it still has a slight amount of bite, like you would cook your spaghetti, or like when you cook your risotto. There's still an element of bite to it, so it's not completely mushy. So that's what we are looking for when we say the word or term al dente. When you look at food, you want texture as well as taste, as well as flavour. And a vegetable shouldn't be boiled to death, certainly. And you, you, want, you want to feel that, you want to enjoy that. It wants to be pleasing to the, to, to the palate. The saying that in France, when we've been in France, we've had green beans that have been quite brown and soft. So although an al dente is a phrase, I, I think sometimes they don't use it. It's like everything with Italian food, it's just the simplicity of the ingredients. It's restraint, it's less is more approach. You've got some seafood, you've got some pasta, and you're making uh, like a little passata. You're finishing off with some cherry tomatoes just so you've got that little bite of freshness again. But it's absolute restraint and it delivers in flavour because the small pasta, the fragola, absorbs all of that stock, absorbs the fishy juices. And, and, and just, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a lovely family sharing meal. Okay, so my journey was probably not dissimilar to a lot of the students here. Um, however, I started off in McDonald's as a 15 and three quarter year old. Got my national insurance card. There was a new McDonald's opening in Hartford and I applied for a part-time job just to support um, my learning. I think I worked there for 12 weeks, it was just a starting point, worked hard and um, started at college, then got a part-time job in a local hotel, um, worked Wednesday nights, Friday night and Saturday all day. So that supplemented and, and, and was some, some earnings while I was at college. Left college on a Friday, started a job on a Monday at a, a, a local sort of restaurant and hotel and worked my way up as a commie, as a chef de party. But as we've alluded to, and everyone knows, I love riding my bike. I dreamt of being a pro cyclist. Although I raced uh, three national championships, I just wasn't good enough to turn pro. So I parked those ambitions and 100% um, and, and, and focused on, on the kitchen and cooking. Um, when I was 25, I moved over to food service. Um, so cooking for business and industry. and. Um, I made my way up from there, taking the, uh, taking the job as executive chef at Lloyd's of London as a 29 year old, which I think was the youngest um, sort of chef leader in their 288 year history. So, um, that job there allowed me to cook for national and international royalty, including the Queen, so it was a huge, a huge honour to have a position there. And I was there for eight years. Uh, my advice for students is uh, certainly as I would say to any young chef is two eyes, two ears and one mouth and use them in that ratio. So in other words, lots of listening, lots of, um, you know, lots of watching what's going on and, and, you know, asking questions, but the right questions. So not, not just having your own conversations while a demo is going on or while someone is talking. These moments are very, very important. You can pick up so much, you know, 